because this opening segment was just hilarious because, you know, Ricky Starks appears to be going heel. CM Punk well, is supposed to be a babyface. Well. The fans loved Ricky. They hated Punk. That's true. They no, set up. Wait, that's not true. No. The, the opening segment. I'm not talking about the main event. The opening segment on the show. He got zero cheers. He walked out, and it was 100% booze. Darby got booed, saying that he was CM Punk's friend. It was a 100% heel reaction in that opening segment. And then uh, they set up a tag match, which uh, was Punk, who is booed, against Darby, who's usually cheered but got booed, against Ricky, who's a heel who got cheered, and Christian, who is a heel. But, uh, yeah, I'm just... All right. (laughs) I think there's a lot of shades of gray on that show. If you look at it, it's amazing. They got a roster of, what, 3,000 people in AEW. But it, this feels like a, a Mid-South show in some ways from, like, 83, where it's like Christian is Skandar Akbar. Everybody hates him. But then there's CM Punk, and depending on who he's up against, eh, people will cheer him or boo him. Then there's Ricky Starks, who, again, everybody's like a shade of gray here right now. Is he a heel? Is he a baby face? It depends on who he's facing. I don't know why they're going hard in the direction of making Ricky Starks do heelish things and have him hold on to the ropes. I mean, I guess they have a story for it, but I don't think it's something that people have wanted. But with that said, again, I think they're lucky on that show, considering they only feature X amount of people, that if he's facing the House of Black, he's probably going to get cheered wildly. But if he's facing Darby Allen in a one-on-one, Darby Allen's probably going to get going to get cheered. And I think that's you know, the same way with CM Punk. You know what's funny about Ricky Starks is that I'm not sure if people remember this, but he was a heel, and he was so entertaining that the fans decided that he needed to be a babyface, and they essentially turned the guy. You know, he would do that rope walk spot as a heel, and they would pop huge for it. Yeah. And so they went babyface with him. And then, you know, you could have gone further with him, but then it all stalled out, and now he's going heel again. It's like we missed Don't out on the opportunity for him being one of your top babyface stars. I don't know why. They do that all the time. That's one thing. They are the kings of... of- of the letdown where was the follow-up with action andretti and chris jericho again that type of angle that they did is used to catapult somebody and they didn't like that would have been a better angle to do with ricky starks frankly you know and then you know make him a title contender right after that but then again in aew's world would there have been a follow-up they have done this so many times and in, in the case of ricky starks i think it's like powerhouse hobbs too they continue to go with him as a heel they continue to have this qtv faction again if he's going to be a heel and he laid out all a qtv great you know make him a man on his own but having him you know linked in with qt it again it just doesn't work when people want to cheer the guy or at the very least don't want to see him with a bunch of people that they don't want to cheer we had uh, jay white and juice beating darius and action and dready 11 minutes match was good but then, uh, you know, Bullet Club Gold hit the ring, beat up the baby faces afterwards, and well, that was it. I Tell mean, you what, R- R- Jay White and Ricky, or Jay White and Juice Robinson fit into that shade of gray as well, too. If they're facing the House of Black, they're going to get booed. If they're facing somebody else, you know, or they're going to get cheered, and they're facing somebody else, they're probably going to get booed. The one thing that they have going for them is Austin and Colton Gunn are so annoying and we're so annoying during this match that it is really hard to actually cheer them when you want to kill the guns on the outside screaming bang bang club over and over again. We had uh, Miro basically squashing Nick Camaroto, and then it was over. And at that point, I really got to thinking that it's one thing on week one. It's it's another thing. You guys remember the the first episode of Collision? It was like a very, very good show, and it just felt like a self-contained show. Like, okay, that was a fun show. What are the storylines? Like, where are we going? Well, we're now five weeks in, and I'm watching the show, and uh, what's going on here? What are what are Jay and Juice doing? What is Miro doing? What is House of Black doing? Acclaimed and Daddy Ass are doing something, but it appears, you know, they went four minutes, Daddy Ass got pinned, 
Then he took his boots off, stormed out, bowled his way past the acclaim. So they're they're pretending like he's going to be retiring here. And, uh, you know, that is a angle. But, you know, the, the biggest thing on this show is like, what are the storylines? The next segment was FTR. You know, FTR collision regulars. What's their storyline? Well, their storyline now is they're facing the winners of a Dynamite tournament next week, which is MJF and Adam Cole. And, uh, you know... Do I need to get into this again? Do I need to make people mad again? Yeah, I understand what Dax's gimmick is. Did you watch the promo? This was not an in... Like, Cash did an in-character promo. Dax is upset about dancing and everything like that. I mean, he's talking about how you guys did comedy and there ain't going to be no dancing. And it's like, okay, in storyline, what happened here? Well, what happened was MGF and Adam Cole teamed up in a wrestling tournament they beat other wrestlers they won the wrestling tournament and now they're going to face you in a wrestling match for the wrestling titles like it doesn't matter if they danced or whatever yes like, it does i mean the show aired on tv and they saw it and they can comment on it it did happen right i to me i don't know here's let me also come from it from this place I don't know if there has been a bunch of pushback and a bunch of conversation about this. I, I I don't know that. But just watching it, I didn't see there being really any issue with FTR's promo or with Dax's promo other than it was long and they were in New York. And that, like, it was we've been talking about the whole time, the New York, that crowd was going to do what it was going to do and cheer who they wanted and all that stuff. To me, they've been doing these skits. They've been doing this stuff on TV. Even if Adam Cole and MJF don't reference it, it's okay to put as part of a promo. It, it makes sense. How else is FTR supposed to build up this match and shoot back against these two opponents other than, well, it's the world champion and then and a great contender? You know, they're they're throwing stuff at the fact that they're being goofs together. So, again, I don't know if there is so much other stuff sewn deep into this, but it didn't certainly seem that way just, just watching it. Sky Blue and Taya had a match. Taya beat her. And then, Am I wrong? I would think that most of the people that watch this promo would agree that it was a bad promo. And uh, I, 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 Look, I'm not saying it was in the all-time great promos. I just, what am, what am I missing here that I, what, inside baseball and everything did I miss in this? Because if you watch the promo, he's doing Which his promo, and the crowd starts chanting for double clothesline, and he loses train of thought, and he gets flustered, and he has to turn and say, yeah, yeah, we like it too. Like, it, it, he's he is not prepared right now for the other team to be more over than they are. And it was very clear watching the promo as he tried to explain why you shouldn't be cheering them because we killed our bodies for the, the tag team championships and they're out there dancing. And we don't want dancing and we don't co want comedy. We just are going to do a wrestling match. And, Isn't uh, that their gimmick, though? Well, you, you know who did a great promo was Cash. Cash was all storyline. Everything was all storyline. Okay. And then Dax was in there and having to be flustered because the fans were chanting for the other team and chanting for a double clothesline. Like, uh, I mean, it was pretty, I thought, exactly okay. I mean, look, hey, obvious what was going on here. Oh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm an adult then who missed this, but I, maybe people are looking a little bit too into it. I don't know. Now, the tie is sky blue. Taya beat her and then did a promo, which was essentially, I have not been doing all that great lately, but tonight I won. And you know who else won lately? Britt Baker. You won, but you won against an extra. It's not special to beat an extra. Therefore, Wednesday, we're going to wrestle each other. I say, if you want to go off on a promo, like, this is the what? one. What? Oh, my God. What? Wow. Wow. I am a loser. <laughs> you are a loser. You know what? We should wrestle each other. That's like... Uh, the Mike Boyette Invitational. <laughs> yeah. And then Punk and Darby against Ricky and Christian. And, uh, you know, I thought the last uh, few minutes of this match were great. I thought the last two, three minutes... All sorts of cool stuff there at the end. But uh, this was 25 minutes long, and uh, it certainly did not need to be. 
And, you know, the crowd got tired at points. They did double clothesline chants. They chanted for the turtleneck and everything like that. And then Punk makes this preposterous hot tag. He's He throws a cartwheel, apparently for Bam Bam Bigelow. Yeah, for Bam Bam. He does the old Randy Orton split jump, which... Uh, that was a Bam Bam thing, too. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Before Orton. And then... Uh, anyway, that was that. But then Ricky ended up pinning Darby using the ropes. Which, granted, you know, Ricky wasn't going to pin Punk Did again. Did CM Punk do that because he thought Ricky Starks was more over than he was in the building? I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. But you know what? It's like if I did a Royal Rampage on Friday night and Darby Allen won, and now he's going to get a shot at the uh, at the TNT title in Wembley in front of 75,000 people, I don't think I would have pinned him on this show. But you know what? They did. So that's that. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.